Uh, thanks everyone. So I'm from Logs.io and uh, um, I'm going to talk here about uh, DevSecOps and uh, if it really exists and how it works. Uh, so uh, my name is Asaf and uh, I'm an engineer, which means that uh, I'm not usually a presenter. So I usually tend to run, scream through these things like uh, really, really fast. So uh, if I talk fast or if there is, uh, I go back and forget things that I, uh, I should have said, then uh, uh, just forgive me in advance. I am uh, one of the founders of Logs.io. Um, I'm sure you can guess by the name what we do. Uh, we're a log analytics company, and I'll explain a little bit uh, uh, later how we work and what we do. Um, as an engineer, I'm a strong believer that software should be built the way engineers uh, want to consume it. So it's all API-driven, a lot of open source, um, and I also do a lot, like to do a lot of uh, uh, kind of off-work activities like flying, cooking, and, uh, and art. So uh, what is Logs.io? Uh, Logs.io is a continuous operations platform built on ELK. Uh, how many of you are familiar with the ELK stack, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana? OK, it's, uh, it's usually what we get, which is most of the people are familiar with it. Uh, and today, it is became like the, the de facto uh, service for log analysis, for security, and for metrics as well. Uh, we call ourselves a continuous operation because uh, we believe that the world has changed to be more continuous. Uh, you see a lot of companies here that support CI, CD, and the whole process around this. And one of the things that we see is the same thing that happened with uh, development and getting into production, same thing is going to happen with security, and it already is happening. So uh, we support the monitoring, troubleshooting, and security with one product, which is built on top of ELK. Um, our vision is, uh, uh, is to build uh, on top of open source. So everything we do and everything we offer, uh, you can actually go and download all the services on your own, install it, and have the exact same experience that uh, we have with Logs.io. Uh, we're a strong believer in open source, uh, and we're contributing to a lot of open source uh, uh, project. We also believe in ease of use and usability. Uh, all the connectivity, everything that we do is, uh, is very simple to connect, very easy to connect, uh, and basically the time to value is, uh, is minimal. We're also a big believer in intelligence and machine learning. I'm sure you've heard today's uh, uh, keynote about uh, machine learning, how Amazon is investing a lot of it uh, in it, and uh, we're also we're doing something pretty cool, which I'm going to talk about, which is a, a whole different way of looking at uh, machine learning and getting intelligence into the IT operations and the security space. Uh, we're also built for engineers, we're by engineers, so uh, all the people that work in the company are engineers, uh, from the, the people that support the product to myself. Uh, my co-founder was the CEO of the company, is also an engineer. Uh, we focus more on bringing value to, uh, to the engineers as it comes to the development cycle. Uh, I'm sure you've seen slides like this or this one before. Um, security is, an, is a growing concern. Uh, everyone who runs in the cloud, us included, that we run our infrastructure on AWS are concerned about security. Uh, we're concerned about DDoS or denial of service attack, very simple ones. Um, the amount of money that they cost, the amount of time it takes to, uh, to address them is enormous these days. Uh, the estimate is that it takes about $3.6 million uh, for a cost of a security breach. Uh, this is a survey that was done uh, uh, in uh, 2018. Uh, also, the time to detect a security event is pretty long. Um, so uh, um, we've all heard and known about uh, the issue at Staples. They had all the security products, and uh, yet uh, a breach was made in the environment despite all the alerting, despite everything that they've done, um, and uh, it, it went undetected. We feel that there is a better way and there is a new way that is actually needed to address security, more targeting the continuous world and, uh, and more targeting the kind of like new generation of tools. Uh, we've seen that, uh, that security is done by the old, co old companies and old uh, uh, vendors that provide security is not sufficient enough. So some vendors, they either go very, very deep and, and, uh, and wouldn't cover all the problems, where other vendors go very, very wide uh, and, and create a lot of noise, and there should be something in the middle, so create a lot, something which is very deep, but yet doesn't generate a lot of noise. Uh, DevOps and security. So uh, 
I don't know of any engineer that wakes up in the morning and say, hey, I want to make my system more secure. I want to get, uh, uh, I want to make sure that everything is well protected. I want to make sure that I'm, uh, I'm protected against everything. As engineers, what we want to do is deliver as fast as we can. Uh, and that delivery as fast as we can as the productivity that we have as a company and what we do as engineer, that's what counts for us. For us, we measure ourselves, we measure our team by how fast you can deliver the software, how fast you can uh, make changes in production. Uh, and, and obviously, it doesn't bode well with security. Uh, and, uh, and this is something that, uh, that needs to be addressed, especially with all the type of security systems and mechanism that doesn't take into effect the continuous nature uh, of what we do. The other thing is that uh, I'm sure you notice that the world has changed. So no more monolithic servers, no more uh, pushing to production once a quarter. Uh, this thing has long passed, so, uh, or for most companies it has. So uh, everything these days is Dockerized. Uh, we've done a survey and we've seen more companies actually adopting Docker and Kubernetes than actually adopting the cloud. So it's a much, much uh, more adoption. Uh, and uh, it changes a lot of things. So because of the speed that people do, because of the agility, because of the, the reliance on containers and images, a lot of things have changed from a security perspective. For, uh, we run hundreds of containers in our environment on thousands of different uh, uh, instances, and no one knows if someone downloaded uh, an image from the internet that has a malware in it into the production environment. No one knows that someone set up a, a container that opens up ports to the external world. Like, no one just doesn't know, no one knows this thing. No one knows if download an image that has uh, a Bitcoin miner inside of it and then randomly goes out and, uh, and leverages our uh, uh, AWS infrastructure to, uh, to mine for Bitcoin. So a lot of these things, just the ability to grab a lot of things from the internet, ready-made containers and images, uh, set them up in production very easily obviously creates a very high degree of, pro of uh, productivity, but creates a, very, uh, a, very, uh, a lot of issues with security. Uh, so we did a survey, uh, uh, we did a survey last, uh, this year, and uh, one of the things we found is that uh, more than half of the DevOps teams are actually tasked with security. The ability to find security personnel these days is very, very hard, which means that the, the task and the mission goes down to um, the people on the DevOps team, they are responsible for compliance. Our DevOps team in our organization is responsible for compliance. When the auditors come and do the PCI evaluation, when someone comes and do the penetration testing, uh, when we need to go through the GDPR uh, audits, when we need to go to the HIPAA audit, it's our DevOps team. They need to come up with the procedure. They need to prove that they're uh, compliant. And, uh, uh, and the reality is that very few engineers are, are capable of doing it. So, um, so the estimate is that from the survey, we got that 57% of the DevOps, uh, they feel like they don't have an adequate uh, service to do it. They feel like they need to set up an, uh, uh, kind of like an ad hoc, uh, different machines or different services to be able to prove that they're compliant, to be able to make sure that they're secure. Um, and if you ask a, a DevOps engineer, say, hey, are you guys secure? The answer is obviously going to be, of course. And it's, uh, how are you secure? Well, we're running on Amazon and we have a WAF and we have uh, uh, VPCs and are configured, and uh, we have a sort of user that access the system, but how are you auditing that the set of users is actually accessing the system? How are you auditing that no one spins out the EC2 machines in regions that, uh, that you don't control? So all these things uh, uh, create a gap in the market. Uh, the problem with legacy uh, security systems is that uh, um, they're very expensive. I don't know how many of you have ever tried to deploy uh, uh, a traditional security or a SIM solution, it's very, very expensive. It, takes, it actually takes more time than the average tenure of a DevOps engineer in a company. So the likelihood of you completing this uh, deployment is, uh, 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 is very, very hard to do. They're very noisy. So uh, you, all, you all manage a production and you know it is, and usually when you go to uh, manage operations, you start off with an empty system and you start building up based on incidents that happen. 
okay, this service failed, now I'm gonna set up an alert, I'm gonna wake this guy up, I'm gonna solve this bug in production, uh, and that's how we wanna do. So you build up the knowledge of the organization, eventually you get to a system that is automated and it's all running properly. With security, it's the other way around. Nobody wants to get breached and say, hey, I got breached, now I'm gonna plug this hole. Hey, I got breached, now I'm gonna plug this hole. So you start with a system with a lot of noise, and now you're trying to reduce that noise. And reducing the noise and security is how am I gonna know if this alert is, is problematic or not? Like I get uh, 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 scans by this, but this might be my Nagio server that is accessing the system, but how do I get rid of the alert in a way that I'm not gonna be affected uh, when a real uh, uh, intruder is gonna come? Um, so that's uh, uh, the problem with the existing ones. Uh, what do engineers want? Uh, what they want is something which is going to be easy. Nobody wants to go ahead and deploy a system that takes months and years to deploy. No one ever. Uh, not, not, uh, not in this, uh, uh, in our time anymore. Uh, one system with easy integration. One system you can plug it out. You can plug it to AWS. You can plug it to your firewalls. You can plug it into all the systems, and uh, it's very easy to integrate. Uh, and you want a system that comes out of the box with compliance, with a lot of stuff that uh, that exists in it. Uh, you also want a system that is, it is, that is already set up for the world that we all live in. We live in a continuous world. We live, I can tell you about ourselves as a company, we push 100 builds of production every single day. Every single day, the developer at the moment, he checks in, it goes to an automated test, and it goes straight to production. We live in a continuous integration world where all the tests are automated. We live in a continuous deployment world where everything goes straight to production. We spin up uh, uh, Kubernetes pods as we get more and more uh, products in. And uh, basically what we need from a security perspective is, uh, is a, continuous, uh, a continuous system that's gonna track it from the development, through the integration, through the deployment, uh, and not just say, this is the security, you're the CISO, take care of the production and, uh, and make sure that it's secure. So you gotta track it all the way, uh, all the way through. Um, so, uh, Logzio Continuous Operations uh, platform is, is uh, set up for that specific use case of, of dealing with the continuous world. Um, so, first of all, we are built on open source. Uh, I'm sure you guys all know the benefits of leveraging open source. Um, the fact that you can deploy it and set it up on your own. The, the fact that uh, it follows with a large community that you can either ask any question that you want, uh, or you can contribute to the community, which as developers, it's, uh, it's fun. Um, we also build at cloud scale, and, uh, uh, and uh, this is something we do. We also very, have a lot of compliance and security analytics, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. Uh, at the core of what we do is the ELK service. So uh, today we're the only one who offer ELK as a true cloud service, so as a true multi-tenant service, uh, and there's a lot of benefits to doing it. So I talk a little bit about the benefits of, uh, of using open source, the, the lack of vendor lock-in, uh, lock the fact that uh, it moves really, really fast. If you look at the progression of, of uh, uh, services like Elasticsearch uh, uh, and Kibana, you see the, the tremendous change that there is from usability in the UI. If you look at projects like Grafana, which is the leading one in the monitoring space, the same things. Um, and uh, this is the core of what we do. On top of it, we build it as a cloud service. So we build all these things that you see in here, so you can basically send us unlimited data, uh, very easy connectivity. Uh, if you have a spike in data because now you get breached, then we take care of it and, uh, and we make sure that, uh, that you're supported and everything is working uh, fine. Uh, on top of it, uh, on top of the continuous uh, uh, operation platform, we build our analytics platform. So uh, we have a security analytics with just threat detection. So we connect to a bunch of threat intelligence services that uh, can map up different threats and say, hey, I have a rule here that I'm connected to my uh, uh, corporate firewall and someone walks in with, a, with an iPhone that is, uh, has a, a, an open connection in it, it's gonna get alerted. Uh, we get alert if someone's trying to do uh, uh, exfiltrate data uh, from the system, you get alerted about it. So all of this comes with uh, uh, um, kind of like with what we do. Uh, same thing with anomaly detection. The way we do anomaly detection is very, uh, I would say it's, a, it's actually very simple and simplified. So for example, we track all the AWS regions that you're in. If you spin up an EC2 machine in a region that you're not in, 
uh, that's an alert. It might be legitimate, but it's unlikely to happen that, uh, um, uh, that just m machines are being spun up uh, instantaneously. Uh, we track the users that log into the system, and if someone out of the system logs in, then we, uh, uh, we alert on it. So this is something that, uh, uh, that we do. Uh, we also provide integration, so uh, we provide integration to uh, uh, different components. So all the AWS security components, so it's guard duty, it's inspector, it's uh, uh, VPC flow, flow logs, it's config rules, uh, it's uh, Macy, and all the suite of AWS that, uh, that deals with security, we provide very easy and simple uh, integration with. Uh, and on top of it, we wrap it with, uh, with machine learning and the insights uh, and the ability to basically advance it to the next level and understand what's going on in the environment. Now, a lot of the system and a lot of the security system that you see around here focus on machine learning, um, what's called an unsupervised machine learning. If you heard the session uh, today, that's a lot of uh, what people do. And uh, what it basically means is there is a black box algorithm that works, you train it, uh, and then everything which is out of the norm is, uh, is being highlighted. The challenge with security and the challenge with IT operation that our environment and any other environment is like one big anomaly. Servers go up and down, connectivity go, goes up and down, a new customer joins which makes a spike in the data. It's all anomalies which are all perfectly fine. They don't indicate of any problem with security. The other thing with security is that what what companies try to do is say, hey, I'm going to cluster, I'm going to map out the normal behavior, and I'm going to alert you when there is a behavior which is outside the norm. So guess what all the perpetrators do? They imitate a normal behavior because that's the easiest thing to do. So if you know how to track a normal behavior, uh, if you know what it is, then you can easily pass through the system and, uh, uh, and just go undetected. Uh, so the way we, uh, we do our, uh, our security and our uh, machine learning and, uh, and AI is by looking at crowdsource for the intelligence. So we scan different forums, different threads, different questions that are asked in our system, different questions that are asked on other system, and we use machine learning to narrow it down to understand what the question was, understand the implication, and basically create a database, uh, a living database of all the events that can happen at the, uh, from a security, from an IT operation perspective, and then we continuously run it on all the data as it's streamed through. So if we did take a signature of a malware that someone say, someone exfiltrating data, or we did take something that does a collateral movement within a VPC flow, then these are all things that are continuously updated because someone will search for it, someone set up an alert about it, someone uh, talked about it in a different forum, and we know how to capture it uh, in your environment. What it ensures is basically that uh, um, when, when if this is interesting for a lot of people, then it should be interesting for you to look at. So it creates that live uh, database. Uh, we call this thing uh, the Cognitive Insights, which is uh, it's a patented technology that we have. Uh, and uh, if you want to see it in action, uh, we have a booth here, and I can give you the number later, and, uh, and you see how it works. Uh, so this is it. Uh, this is a testimonial from one of This is actually an unsolicited testimonial of one of our customers in the, in the IT operation space. Um, we capture things on database errors, we capture things on uh, uh, different events that happen and nobody uh, was bothering to look for. No one wake up in the morning and say, hey, I'm going to search on my log for database exceptions. So uh, uh, these are the type of the things that uh, we alerted and obviously this is an example from the IT operation world, but the uh, but same goes for uh, uh, the security space. Um, last thing I want to show, this is the metrics of different uh, components that we support. Some of it uh, uh, we're adding as we go. Some of it, this was slide was submitted a couple of months ago to AWS, so now we have a full support metrics on, uh, on things that we do here, and we map it, and uh, the same thing goes with the algorithm that, uh, that you can see and, uh, uh, and detect. Uh, so, uh, I hope it was uh, valuable. Uh, again, my name is Asaf. If anyone here has any questions, uh, then I'd be happy to answer. Uh, we have like, a couple of minutes left, and uh, if not, we'd be happy if you come visit us at booth uh, 1938. Um, we actually have a, a quite interesting DevOps quiz uh, uh, that we uh, be happy for you to take. And uh, if anyone does have questions, I can bring you the microphone. Anybody? Yeah. Just raise your hand. All right, you've covered everything. Okay, thank <laughs> you. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you, Osef. Thanks.